After studying this module, you shall be able to know various steps involved in water purification, learn the various techniques of water purification, learn different methods of disinfection of water, evaluate the level of purity of water at each step of purification. You all must be familiar with the importance of water in our day-to-day -day life. The use of contaminated water causes several diseases, waterborne diseases such as jaundice, scorla, etc. Therefore, it is very important to remove these contaminants from the water in order to make it fit for drinking and other household purposes. Since the protection of the environment and public health are extremely important, hence treatment of wastewater is an absolute necessity for any nation. Water has different levels of quality classification based on its potential use. Drinking water or potable water should be of the highest level of purity. Water bodies become contaminated with waste water from various sources like industrial waste, domestic waste and municipal waste etc. and therefore require different types of purification methods depending on the source and the end use. In this module, we will discuss these methods of water purification in detail. If a small amount of biodegradable waste is present in water body, then it can be easily decomposed by microorganisms present in the water. This is known as self-purification. The increasing amount of pollutant Pollutant could be any like organic chemical, toxic metals or pesticides in water has pushed the self-purification process beyond their limits. Therefore, water has to be purified before it is to be reused. Though different types of water require different mechanism for water purification, but all treatment process for water quality improvement go through some generalized steps. Water treatment is an industrial process to make water fit for drinking or other industrial uses. This helps in removal of contaminant from water in order to return less concentration of contaminated water to the environment. The waste water discussed in this module is predominantly of domestic origin. The main purpose of sewage treatment is to stop the receiving water pollution. In the sewage treatment, there are number of industrial and laboratory waste waters are collected. In general, water purification process are divided into three stages. These are Preliminary which is also called physical, primary treatment which is can be called mechanical treatment and secondary or biological treatment. Domestic and municipal wastewater should receive at least primary which involve physical removal and settling and secondary treatment which can be followed by disinfection before discharge. Sometimes effluent obtained from secondary treatment is not acceptable. Therefore, third level of treatment that is tertiary treatment or advanced treatment is used. We will study each of them in detail. The flow chart which is shown here, it represents a typical wastewater treatment plant which involves primary process, followed by secondary process and disinfection. So we will study each of them in detail. Let us first discuss about pre-primary treatment in water purification. It involves removal of chorus, suspended, dispersed and colloidal impurities from water. First of all, screening is done to remove relatively large floating and suspended debris. Screening process is basically used to reduce the size of large solids passing through the sewage system. 
the process is such as firstly the solids are collected and disposed of comminuting devices are used to grind these solids into the sewage the floating material is removed by skimming substances like oil grease free fatty acids and insoluble soaps are eliminated by skimming the efficiency of this process can be increased by adding collecting and activating agents like potassium xanthates which form a thin film of suspended particles to which air bubbles get attached forming agents like oil or glue may be added to stabilize the froth for a longer period of time so that the grit particles remain attached to the bubbles before these can be skimmed off the primary treatment involves removal of all suspended solids by flocculation and sedimentation in this treatment waste water and chemicals are mixed that causes coagulation of suspended solids to larger particles of flock after that settling of the flock takes place by slowing the flow that causes gravity to dominates and settle the flock the figure shown here represents you the various process used for the primary treatment of waste water these two process coagulation and fluctuation are interdependent process we will study these two now in detail as you know waste water contain suspended particles and other impurities that are very very small and sometimes it is not even visible so it requires some time to settle down and then it can only be filtered so this process of consolidation of colloidal particles terminating in precipitation of the substance and its removal from the treated water by settling or filtration is called coagulation what happens in coagulation in this process the smaller particles what do you mean by smaller particles the particles which has size range of the order of 10 to power minus 3 to 10 to power minus 6 meter so what happened they adhered together and they grow in size and therefore can be easily removed by filtration and sedimentation most of colloidal particles in water they are stable negatively charged and therefore being same charge they repel each other the coagulant neutralizes that charge and allows particle to come close and larger particles are formed which now can be removed from the water very easily the commonly used coagulant are aluminum sulfate which is called alum ferrous sulfate potassium aluminum sulfate which is commonly called potash alum and ferric chloride but they are used as in the dilute solution normally 5 to 10% of their concentration are used as it is also shown in the figure you can see from this waste water is coming and here the coagulant are mixed with the waste water there is rapid mixing with the help of this motor after that it is passed to the second tank which involves the fluctuation where the speed of mixing is reduced and there occur the slow rotation in this tank so what happens here the particles they adhere together and it is then passed into the next tank where the solid particles adhere and they stabilizes and they will accumulate it at the bottom from where they are removed so now you will see what happens chemically when you add coagulant here it is alum so what happens it will combines with the negatively particles of the water 
and it is forming aluminium hydroxide. You can see in this equation the particles of aluminium hydroxide they will settle down at the bottom. Some of the aluminium ions aluminium plus 3 produced by dissolution of alum neutralize the negative charge on the colloids and due to basicity of water acid formed is neutralized to form insoluble aluminium hydroxide which is shown in the reaction. The aluminium hydroxide absorb ions from the solution and forms a precipitate of aluminium hydroxide and absorbed sulphates. The process of coagulation now depends on factors like pH of water, amount of coagulant, water temperature etc. Like an increase in the hydrogen ion concentration or decrease in the pH of medium causes the equilibrium to shift to the left. At low pH aluminium hydroxide passes into the solution and the process of coagulation is disturbed. Aluminium hydroxide due to its amphoteric nature dissolves at high pH resulting into the formation of aluminates. If insufficient amount of bicarbonates are present in water then the pH must be raised by adding lime or sodium carbonate. So, the pH of the water should be optimum for the entire process of coagulation. Here also it is shown the process of coagulation. You can see there are very small small impurities present in the waste water. As soon as we add coagulant, what happens? Coagulant form the precipitate and it traps almost all the impurities from the water. And after some time these precipitates will settle down at the bottom and these are removed from the water. The process of fluctuation follows after coagulation which involves mixing which forms the fine particles by coagulation. So, fluctuation exists for 30 to 45 minutes. Water is then passed through a fluctuation basin having number of compartment with decreasing mixing speeds. What happens by this? This allows large flock to form without breaking due to mixing blades. After fluctuation the next process in water purification is sedimentation. We will discuss this sedimentation process now. In sedimentation process solid particles are allowed to settle by gravity on the bottom of the settling tanks which are also called sedimentation tank or primary clarifiers. This process involves in reduction of the velocity of water that results the settling of suspended particles due to gravity. Tanks are used to settle sludge but grease and oil rises and skimmed off. This also I have explained you earlier. The suspended solids, flock and other precipitates are continuously driven by the scrappers in the settling tank towards the hopper inside the base. Then the suspended solid is pumped to sludge treatment. Sedimentation, coagulation and fluctuation process takes place that removes suspended particles from the water before filtration. Next process after sedimentation is the filtration which is the last process and it involves solids collected at the bottom of the sedimentation tanks are removed and the effluent water is filtered. The most widely used filtration unit is a rapid sand filter which is shown in the figure. What happens here? But this filter consists of a layer of sand on the top of a bed of graded gravels. 
gravity filtration is done in order to frequently remove these solids. In this process, water with solid impurities is sent to the porous medium which are basically layers of sand and gravel. The force of gravity is used to push the water through the medium. You can see the figure shown here. The water molecules which are smaller in size, they can easily pass through the holes between sand and gravel pieces. But what happens? The solid particles because they are bigger in size, so they get trapped into the holes and hence they are taken in the porous medium. And water which passes through the filter bottom is free from solid impurities like you can see the upper layer which is the fine sand. After that you have the gravel depending on the water impurity we can increase these level. You can use 2-3 different porous size gravel like one gravel one which is of smaller particle smaller pore size then two then three and so on and after that the porous met the porous size will attract all the impurities or the impurities cannot pass through this porous medium and they are removed after the primary treatment water is passed for the secondary treatment we will now discuss about the secondary treatment in the secondary treatment, biological content that is animal and plant waste, soap and detergent is degraded. Aerobic biological process. Aerobic means the process which involves presence of oxygen. Aerobic biological process are used by number of municipal plants in order to settle the sewage. The complex and Hazardous organic compounds are biodegraded by microorganism into harmless simple compounds. A sufficient quantity of dissolved oxygen is important for this process. The secondary treatment is called biological treatment as it involves the decomposer bacteria and air. One of the hazard of this method has been that a toxic industrial chemical may enter the sewage and destroy the microorganisms and wreck the entire process for weeks. Primary treatment combined with secondary treatment can reduce the biological oxygen demand which is called BOD to about 90% chemical oxygen demand which is called COD by 80%, total nitrogen to about 50% and total phosphorus to about 30%. Process mainly used for secondary treatment. The number one trickling filter. Trickling filter they are also called trickling biofilters. Biofilters biological filters and biological trickling filters. They consist of aerobic fixed film systems made out of rocks, gravel, plastic modules etc. Waste water is sprayed on the filter bed and trickles through the filter media. A biofilm growing on the filter material aerobically degrades organic pollutant. A trickling filter is used under aerobic conditions. In this filtration process, waste water which pre-settled is trickled over the filter. As the water passes through the pores of the filter, biomass covering results in degradation of organics present in water. It consists of circular or rectangular beds usually 3 to 5 cm at the top and 10 to 15 cm at the base with a depth of 1 to 3 m. The beds are packed with the stone, gravel, etc. 
you can see the trickling filter and its principle in the figure shown here like this it consists of the rotating inflant distributor from here the water enters and the water continuously trickles from these which passes through this media and air is continuously given so that the aerobic microorganisms use this oxygen and degrade most of the organic material into the CO2 and then the pure water is collected and what happens the own microorganisms they are recycled and they are again used. The next process which can be used for the decomposition of organic waste is activated sludge process. This basically consists of microorganism nurtured in the treatment process for breaking of organic material into carbon dioxide, water and other inorganic compounds. The figure now you can see wastewater inflant, primary treatment, primary clarifier which you have just studied earlier. After that the water is passed into the aeration tank where air is supplied continuously and again as I said here the microorganism consumes this oxygen and degrade the organic material. The water after this passes to the secondary clarifier and we recycle the activated sludge. Activated sludge means it still consists of live microorganisms which can be used again to degrade the organic waste. The water from the secondary clarifier will pass to the next tank where the disinfection is carried out and the waste activated sludge goes to the disposal and activated sludge which consists of the live bacteria goes back to the aeration tank. Aerobic bacteria bloom as they travel through the aeration tank. They rapidly grow in presence of food and oxygen. When the water reaches the tank ending, most of the organic matter is being used by microorganism produce new cells. The organism settle at the tank bottom. Meanwhile, sludge is sent back to the aeration tank where it with the incoming wastewater or removed from the system. The relatively clear liquid above the sludge is supplied for further tertiary treatment. For efficient operation of this method, it is necessary that sufficient amount of activated sludge containing biologically active microorganism must be present. Sometimes the activated sludge is heat dried which involves dewatering and it is sold as fertilizer. The process has been costly and there has been only a limited demand for the product. So, the sludge is inscrinated or used as landfill. Next is anaerobic treatment process. Just now you studied the aerobic treatment process which involves oxygen and the same we can use by anaerobic process that is without the oxygen. In this process anaerobic microorganisms decompose organic waste and produce biomass. This process is used in municipal waste water treatment. Approximately 40 to 60 percent of organic solid is converted into methane and carbon dioxide with hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen sulfide and water in trace amounts. Out of this methane which is CH4 is the most valuable fuel. The metal left after anaerobic decomposition is chemically stable 
nearly odorless and has very less amount of pathogen. On comparing, it is easy to separate the suspended solid from water than the incoming sludge. Anaerobic decomposition occurs in four steps which are shown here. Now, we will discuss each of the process of anaerobic decomposition in detail. First, hydrolysis. In this process, complex organic molecules are hydrolyzed to soluble organic molecules using water to break the chemical bonds in the substances. Fermentation or acidogenesis. The chemical decomposition of organic molecules is carried by anaerobic microorganisms like enzymes, bacteria, yeast, etc. in absence of oxygen. Then acetogenesis. Products obtained from fermentation are converted into acetate, hydrogen and carbon dioxide by acetogenic bacteria. After this last methanogenesis in which methane gas is produced from acetate by methanogenic bacteria. In the figure also you can see the complex organic matter, organic matter mainly carbohydrates, proteins, fats undergo hydrolysis. It is converted into soluble organic chemicals into the like monomers of these complex molecules sugars, amino acids and fatty acids which undergo fermentation and the fatty acids decompose further to acetates, hydrogen and carbon dioxide and also by methanogenesis methane gas is produced. Upflow sludge anaerobic bed reactor. This process defines the settling ability of microbial flux to produce a region at the bottom of the digester where the concentration of biomass is maintained. The waste water is introduced from the reactor bottom and it flows in upper direction through a sludge blanket which is made up of biologically formed granules. Treatment of the waste occurs as it comes in contact with the sludge blanket. Under anaerobic conditions, the organic waste undergoes degradation and produces methane gas. The degradation process produces approximately 5 to 10 percent of sludge. Therefore, this method is effective than the conventional aerobic process. I explain you in the figure here. From the bottom, the inflant water is given and it is has the granular biomass and after this there is reaction zone where all these reactions are carried out then what happens water passes to the clarifier zone and the effluent water is taken out from here and the gas is produced like methane and CO2 are removed by this process. So it is called US, UASB reactor. The last process of the purification of water is disinfection. This process is used to reduce the number of microorganism in the water that is supposed to discharge back into the environment and is almost always the final step in the treatment process regardless of the level or type of treatment used. The efficiency of this method depends on the water quality that is being treated. For example, cloudiness, pH, ammonia content etc. Type of disinfection, the disinfectant dosage and the other variables in the environment. Disinfection of water is achieved by a number of ways. Number one is chlorination. This is the most commonly used method in India. Chlorine either in gaseous form or as hypochlorite salt 
is used to disinfect waste water. All forms of chlorine react with water to produce hypochlorous acid which is HOCl which rapidly dissociate to form the hypochlorite ion according to the reaction HOCl which breaks into OCl- and H+. The main drawback of this method is that the free and combined chlorine residues are toxic to the aquatic organisms. There is also potential for the formation of organochlorinated derivatives. These derivatives tend to be relatively toxic, persistent and bioaccumulative. Next method which can be used is ultraviolet radiation. They can be used instead of chlorine. Bacteria, viruses and many other pathogens are genetically damaged by UV radiation resulting them incapable of reproduction. But main disadvantage of this method is that it needed lamp maintenance and replacement but it required highly treated effluent in order to ensure that the microorganisms that are targeted are not shielded from the UV radiation. Apart from this, ozonation can also be done. In this, microorganisms that contact with ozone are oxidized by unstable and reactive ozone. Ozone is supposed to be safe in use than chlorine as it is generated at the time of need. Therefore, there is no need to store it. But the drawback of ozonation is its high cost as equipment used to generate ozone require special operators. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. We have studied methods of water purification that includes removal of suspended dispersed and colloidal impurities from water. Water treatment is collectively the industrial scale process that make water more acceptable. The waste water discussed in this module is predominantly of domestic origin. The main purpose of sewage treatment is to stop the receiving water pollution. In the sewage treatment, there are number of industrial and lab waste waters are collected. The primary waste water treatment involves the removal of suspended impurities by the series of steps that is coagulation, fluctuation, sedimentation and filtration. On the other hand, in the secondary treatment, BOD is reduced from biologically degraded human waste, food waste, soap and detergent etc. After that, municipal plant treat the sewage biologically. In this treatment process, microorganisms used to break organic matter to carbon dioxide, water and inorganic compounds are known as activated sludge. Tertiary treatment refers to removal of pathogenic microorganism by chlorination, ozonation and UV treatment etc. A drawback of ozonation is its high cost as equipment used to generate ozone requires special operators. We have also learned about steps involved in anaerobic decomposition of microorganisms that is hydrolysis. In this process complex organic molecules are hydrolyzed to soluble organic molecules using water to break the chemical bonds in the substances. Fermentation or acetogenesis, the chemical decomposition of organic molecule is carried by anaerobic microorganisms in absence of oxygen. Acetogenesis, products obtained from fermentation are converted into acetate, hydrogen and CO2 by acetogenic bacteria and methanogenesis where methane gas is produced from acetate by methanogenic 
बैक्टीरिया